Hi, welcome to this tutorial for how to use the ultimate spline system on the Unreal Marketplace. So this is a pretty easy to use spline system. It's really powerful. It works with pretty much everything in the engine. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that you are going to uh, need to do is in your content browser, I have it installed in my project itself, but since you're probably going to get it through the uh, Unreal Launcher, um, you're going to want to have this engine folder here, and the way you get that is to go to settings and then content and click show engine content, and that will give you the option to look through the Unreal Marketplace, and you'll just click the drop down, go to uh, plugins, and then you'll find Ultimate Spline System in here. For me, it's not going to be in here because it's my project. But you'll see it in here, and then what you'll do is you'll go to its, um, you'll go to its either content and go to blueprints, and this will be the spline you can just drag it into the world. Um, or if you don't have that, then you can go to C++ classes, click the folder, click public, and then just right click, create blueprint class based on spline system, and then put it in the folder you want, and that'll give it to you. So, uh, that's basically it to get the blueprint on how to use it. So, let's show you how to set it up in the level. Okay, so right now, um, there's nothing attached to the spline. It's just a, just a normal spline. Um, so, we're going to populate this with a, uh, a spine mesh. And then we're going to do an instant static mesh. Um, so, let's first go over what the basic uh, things are. So arrow height, I recommend adjusting that to like 50. And what this is, is it's an arrow that tells you which way the spline is facing at every point. Um, it's just a little debug thing. If you press G or enter the in-game mode, they'll hide. Um, but this is for editor helper, basically. Um, so this will just how high they go. Um, okay, so the next thing is ground offset. And what this does is I'll show you by setting the duration to persistent. So as you can see, the line trace starts up here. Um, if I were to set this to zero, and I were to move this, then um, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, because it's at zero. So let me set this to none, and then let me set this to for duration. And now, as you can see, it starts at the spline. So the ground offset essentially gives it a way to adjust like hills and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so if you're working with hills or other things that aren't flat, I'd adjust this to like 100 or 500, and that way the snap to ground trace starts up higher up. Um, and then that's what this allow snap to ground does, is you can just toggle this off and on, and if you toggle this off, you can go up and down. Um, the thing about the with it off is you want to make ground distance set to zero, and the reason you do that is if you don't, the spline will go really far down, or the spline mesh, um, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. But if you set it to zero and snap the spline is off, it'll follow the spline. Um, so then the next thing is ground collision ch uh, channel. Assuming you're just using default collision channels, you won't need to change this, but if you set up your ground on like a different collision channel, then you'll want to change that. Okay, ground debug trace just draws a line trace wherever it was, um, wherever it moves. Now, the spawn separation amount is important. Um, this has to be above 10. If it's below 10, I put a check on it to not allow anything to happen to prevent infinite calculations on the spline. Um, but for what this does is it actually be easiest to show you. So let's get a spline and some static mesh. We'll go down here and we will get the spline cube. Okay, so this is pretty much how you do it. Um, you just pick the static mesh you want, set it scale. I'll do 1.0, 1.0, 1.0. There we go. And now it's populating along the spline. And then the other thing you can do is I'm not going to do it here. But you can choose to override the materials on the mesh. So what you want to do is you want to go to the mesh itself. You want to look at how many material slots it has. And then based on the element number, element index, right, you want to add, you want to change it here. So if you have five material slots, you can do one, two, three, four, five, and then change them 
and they would correlate to the number here. Um, I'm, I don't have any, so I'm not going to change that. But that's how you could change the materials on the spline. Um, so let's let's show you what snap to ground looks like here. So snap to ground, we'll snap the spline. Let's see here. Snap to ground, I'll probably do 2,500. And then 100. And I believe I will have to move this. That's, oh, that's why. It's because, what is happening? Ah, ground distance. I did ground offset. My bad. Yeah, so if we do ground distance and not ground offset, my mistake, um, it'll snap the ground. Now, as you can see, they're, they're sticking into the, um, the ground, so there's a way to fix this. So if you go down and you go to general and you go to spawn height and we set this to like 100, you can mess with this value. Now they'll be offset to the ground. Um, so you can just, if they're stuck in the ground, just go down to general, go to spawn height. Um, another thing you can do is you can randomize the spawn location. So let's say we want to make, um, pretend this is coral here, and we want to make it like farther out randomly. So what we can do is we can do 500, 500, 500. Actually not, I don't want to change the seed. Um, but now it won't be so uniformly even. And this is great for like environments where you have rocks or coral or, or whatever. Um, and that's, that's good for that. If you turn it off, it won't, this value won't matter. Um, you can also adjust the coal distance, which let's say we set this to 5,000, they'll start culling, and as we go in, they'll cull back in. Um, and it'll happen to the ones on the spline, which is great. Not the whole spline. Okay, um, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, everything is pretty self-explanatory after that. You just pick the type you want in here, and then choose it. Um, I am going to go over the spline mesh real quick for one thing, but one thing I did want to show you is the spawn separation amount in practice. Let's say we set this to 1200. Now the instant static meshes are going to be further apart, and this will go for particles and really all of them. Um, the other thing is if we were to bring it to like 50, it'll look like a whole mesh. Um, so yeah, but if we go to like 5, it'll just turn off because I put that check on to avoid infinite calculations. Um, so if we go to 11, then they'll pop up again. But yeah, that is pretty much it for that. Um, if that's all you needed to know, you can hop off this video. I'm going to show you how to do spline meshes now um, and point scaling on them. So I have a spline cube. And one thing to note about spline meshes, if you haven't used them before, is you want to go into Blender and take, or if it's not already subdivided, you want to go into Blender and you want to make sure that it's subdivided a bit. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it needs to have more vertices than just like one face per side. Um, so I went into Blender and made this cube subdivided a little bit. So uh, that's one thing that you need to keep in mind. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it will, um, if you don't, it'll make the curves not look very smooth. Okay, so let's turn off snap to ground. Let's set the ground distance to zero. And I'm going to show you how to uh, modify the spline points. So it's pretty simple. Um, all you gotta do is, you, as you can see, you can go ahead and do this. Um, but if you take one of these points and you scale it on the green and the blue, you can make it where each one of these is their own point and their own scale. And so you can do a lot of cool shapes with this um, and a lot of cool things. So yeah, that's pretty much it with spline meshes and the rest. Um, the process is just to reiterate over here, is you set the values you want on here. Um, I'm gonna turn off ground debug trace. You set the values you want. Remember, ground distance needs to be zero if you are um, if you are uh, not using the snap to ground. And the reason for that is, I probably won't do it on this. If we go to instant static mesh, it will, it'll place them downwards. Um, so that's why you set it to zero if it's not snap to ground. Okay. So you just pick the, to reiterate, you just pick the type you want. Um, blueprints, you're going to have to set up all the code and components and stuff you want in Blueprints. Um, and it'll just spawn the Blueprint along the spline. Um, and then from here, you just pick the static mesh, the cold distance, that kind of stuff. Um, the asset you want to use, the, you know, the intensive point line, whatever, whichever version you're using. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just set the values and the type. 
And that's pretty much it for the Spline Ultimate Spline system. Thanks for watching. Um, I will link it below on the marketplace. And have a good one.